body and welcome back to another Doctor Who action figure product review. In today's review I'm going to be taking a look at, you guessed it, yet another B&M exclusive action figure collector set. This time around the Doctor and TARDIS collector set of the Wave, being the season 19 collector set of the 5th Doctor and TARDIS from the Visitation. We have of course previously seen a 5th Doctor TARDIS released as a part of the B&M series, however this time round we have a few paint application changes and the absence of mud on the base, as the previous TARDIS was from the last 5th Doctor story, The Caves of Androzani. This time round we have a much more generic version of the 80s TARDIS, along with a generic version of the 5th Doctor, rather excitingly wearing a Panama hat. The recommended retail for this collector set, as always, is £19.99, and it is of course available along with the other collector sets as a part of this series now, from various B&M stores throughout the UK. I believe for those of you from outside of England, there is also a number of stores online getting these collector sets, including Amazon and Who North America. But firstly, taking a look at the packaging, it is of course the style guide that we've come to expect over the past few years of the 5.5 collector series, featuring the Doctor Who logo at the very top, as well as a TARDIS graphic running down the side. As always, we get a rather large preview window, giving a good look at the TARDIS on the inside of the box, as well as the Fifth Doctor, and this does of course stretch around to the side of the box as well. As always, we get the inclusion of the limited edition sticker, as well as the title of the set, and stating which episode it is from. As for the other side of the box, of course we have exactly the same information repeated as was the Doctor Who logo and further images of the Doctor and TARDIS out of the box. Now this TARDIS does of course feature opening doors, much like the other 5,872 TARDISes that we've seen released as a part of this series so far. And finally, flipping around to the back of the box, of course we get the title of the set once again, along with further images of the Fifth Doctor and TARDIS. Towards the sides of this, we also get a brief synopsis about the visitation as a story, as well as stating that it was written by Eric Sayward. To in keep with the theme of the previous Doctor and TARDIS collector sets, we also get the inclusion of an insert diorama. This time round, we have a forest-esque setting, with of course a few unusual creatures there lurking in the background. Again, this is from the visitation, so a nice inclusion, and makes this set a little bit more unique. So here we have the Fifth Doctor and his TARDIS out of the box, and I must admit when this set was initially announced, it was another one where I kind of rolled my eyes and thought, ugh, again? Another one? Really? Well this set is interesting to say the least. Of course we previously got to see the Fifth Doctor and TARDIS from the Caves of Androzani, and that set was very worn overall. We had a rather worn and decrepit looking version of the Fifth Doctor, with mud splattered all over his costume, and then we equally had a rather worn looking TARDIS, with mud splattered all the way around the bottom. This time round we have pristine variations of both, and I must admit, it is a set that I actually really like having it in hand. The TARDIS is a rather basic variant of the TARDIS from the 1980s, and it will look great alongside the 5th, 6th and 7th Doctors. And as for the 5th Doctor, we do of course rather excitingly also see the return of the Panama Hat, which is a sculpt which has gone on to be considerably rare. The 5th Doctor figure is one that I wasn't particularly interested in when this set was initially announced, but now that I have it in hand, I'm actually really happy with it. I don't know if that's just me trying to quell my own guilt and trying to justify buying a 5th Doctor and TARDIS for the second time round after previously buying one in only 2019. Hmm. Starting off with the 5th Doctor's trademark cricket jumper, as always the texture detailing looks really impressive, making the jumper look like it's actually made of wool as opposed to being made of plastic. It's a more vibrant white compared to previous versions of the 5th Doctor, usually being painted a yellowy cream colour. The band detailing on the v-neck stands out more than the original Planet of Fire variant, using a thicker black and red line this time round. The shirt, as always, is white, with highlights underneath the collar painted in red. This time the button in the middle of the shirt remains unpainted, and the celery has the standard green and white highlights with some effective natural looking leaf detailing. The coat is a little bit darker to previous versions of the Fifth Doctor, adopting a rather similar set of colours to the one seen within the Thirteen Doctors collector set. Personally, I think it looks a lot better and TV accurate, and generally balances out with the colour of the jumper and the shirt rather nicely. The red piping around the lapels, cuffs and pockets is also slightly toned down compared to some of the previous releases, and again, I think this works rather well. Flipping around to the back of the coat, there is also the inclusion of red piping on the back of the seam, as well as a number of stitching lines where the material of the coat was put together. There is also a few creases on the top part of the arms, however, not too much compared to other Doctor costumes. 
Moving down to the lower half of the Fifth Doctor, the trousers are the usual striped design, and I always think that this particular colour scheme always looks like those sticks of rock that you get at seaside resorts, in particular the light green and red pinstripe design all being very precise. If you look a little bit closer, it does seem to be on the top half of the trousers here, there is an ever so slight scratch, so if you're somebody who's actually able to go into store and individually pick out your Fifth Doctor and TARDIS, that is certainly something to look out for, where there is a few gaps within the design, and in particular as well, in between the legs, looking very unusual, especially around this area here, where it's simply just blank. Unlike previous Fifth Doctor figures, the legs are actually sculpted in a cream plastic instead of being painted cream. The shoes are a vibrant white with no wash added over the top, which again is different to many other Fifth Doctor action figures and the previous Planet to Fire variant. The hands are sculpted in the usual style, one of which has been sculpted to hold a sonic screwdriver accessory, and the other in an open palm position. Much like all the other previous B&M exclusive Dr. TARDIS collector sets, this Doctor does not come with any accessories, and given that this TARDIS and Doctor is meant to be from the season 19 story, The Visitation, I think it would have been nice on this occasion to maybe have a sonic screwdriver for the fifth Doctor, given that this is one of the last ever times it would appear within classic series Doctor Who, as it is of course destroyed at the end of the story. As for the likeness to the Fifth Doctor, I think that this is a really great sculpt, and there is of course a few subtle changes in paint application compared to the previous releases. The eye whites, iris and lips are all painted rather naturally, and the hair has a more prominent wash compared to the original release. In particular, flipping around to the sides, you can see a few individual strands of hair, especially as it collects around the ears. A welcome return for many is the inclusion of the Panama hat, previously quite a rare sculpt, only seeing two releases within the classic series line to date, this one being the third. This has a few nice paint applications, including the red band running around the middle, and overall the shade is ever so slightly lighter compared to that of the coat on the costume itself. Something of which that is a reoccurring theme with many other classic Doctor Who action figures, and in particular the likes of the 5th Doctor and 10th Doctor, and something to certainly look out for is paint scratch around the neck. As we can see here, I've hardly turned the head on my 5th Doctor. You can see ever so slightly the start of a scratch where the paint is rubbed off due to the collar piece. So yes, that's something definitely to note if you decide to go into store and pick this up personally. And also briefly mentioning articulation, the Fifth Doctor is exactly the same to usual, it's your standard character options articulation from the early days of the classic series action figure line. So in conclusion for the Fifth Doctor, to be honest, I really didn't expect to like this figure as much as I do. I think it is a really lovely yet generic version of the Fifth Doctor from his early serials. I think that overall the costume has been really nicely recreated. I love the changes that have been made to the paint application, and overall it looks considerably accurate to what appears within the TV show itself. And not only that, of course, the return of the Panama hat, something of which that I wasn't too excited by when I seen that this set was coming out, partly because I already own the initial Planet of Fire version for Fifth Doctor, but for those of you that don't, this is definitely a welcome addition to the collection, and it is nice to finally have a new version of the Fifth Doctor in a rather accurate looking costume that doesn't have mud splattered all over it. So next up we move on to the Fifth Doctor's TARDIS, and is it worth purchasing after all the previous TARDISes that we've seen released as a part of this series? The short answer in conclusion, yes, I absolutely love it. There's something about this design that is really satisfying to look at, and I think that it's overall the colour palette that has been used. That darker blue, especially when accompanied with the lighter blue signage, and the slightly yellow tint that has been applied to the windows, there's just simply something about this TARDIS that stands out and looks really nice on on the shelf, and to be honest, I really like the original Fifth Doctor TARDIS with all the mud splattered at the very bottom, and I think I can even recall thinking back then when they released that set, had they released this TARDIS again, just with these splatters being removed at the bottom, I would happily purchase it again, because yes, this product looks lovely, and I definitely recommend it, although something of which that I would warn is that if you do have that original version, yes, it does have a few changes, however, it's not particularly an essential purchase. But let's face it, if you bought all the TARDISes so far, you're probably going to buy this one. For the second time within the B&M exclusive series, this TARDIS utilises the stacked roof format originally seen on the 7th Doctor Forbidden Planet exclusive TARDIS, with the inclusion of the original lamp at the very top. However, unlike the initial 7th Doctor TARDIS release, and much like the 5th Doctor previous TARDIS box, this TARDIS does of course utilise the slightly slimmer base that was created for the B&M exclusive series, meaning that this TARDIS is ever so slightly shorter compared to the Forbidden Planet exclusive 7th Doctor box. 
After having this TARDIS on my shelf now for a number of days and kind of glancing at it on occasion, I've noticed that the finish overall on this box is ever so slightly different to the previous B&M exclusive TARDISes. Of course, we've seen over the past few years that generally overall, they tend to look a little bit shinier, almost to the extent of being waxy compared to the original Forbidden Planet exclusive 4th Doctor, 7th Doctor and 1st Doctor boxes that tend to have a really matte finish and overall seem to be a bit higher end in quality. This TARDIS, however, is a bit different. It still has a little bit of a sheen on the top and does look ever so slightly waxy. At the same time, it wouldn't look out of place next to the Forbidden Planet exclusives. I'm really happy with how this TARDIS has turned out overall. It's not to the extent of looking cheap, it's not waxy, it's not shiny. It just has a nice shimmer over the top, but looks ever so slightly matte as well. It looks like that the police box has been worn over use through time, which is very much like how it did look throughout season 19. The TARDIS is sculpted in a slightly lighter blue plastic compared to the Andrew Zani box, which again I think was definitely a good choice. A wash has also been applied over the top of this in a kind of light brown colour, and it really gets into the cracks of the different panels, making them stand out a lot more, as well as emphasising that wood grain effect. I imagine if you're watching this review, you most likely have a number of classic series TARDISes already, so as a result, kind of know what to expect. Of course, the same detailing has been passed across from all the other TARDISes, as for the most part, it is exactly the same sculpt. Therefore, it is basically the same detailing on each and every side. Again, this will vary between the different TARDISes, but of course, you have the two windows and the panels with all the wash applied over the top. And then, of course, around the back, we have the inclusion of the speaker grill, as well as the battery compartment, which is completely redundant for this release as it is a non-electronic TARDIS, as after all, this is a budget £20 set, as opposed to the recommended retail price of £35 that was initially used for the electronic TARDISes as a part of the Forbidden Planet series. The pull-to-open signage in the middle of the front door is in fact an ever so slightly lighter shade of bloom compared to the rest of the box. This time round, to in keep with the theme of the Androzani box, the lettering is in fact white, with the blue border running around the side, which is the same colour to the rest of the box itself. And naturally, this also has a wash applied over the top of this. And then towards the opposite side, we also have the inclusion of the standard handle, which is exactly the same colour to the rest of the TARDIS. And then just above this, we have the inclusion of the lock, which has been given a bronze highlight to make it stand out. Something of which that I did also mention within the previous classic TARDIS review of the second Doctor TARDIS was that they've got rid of the plastic band within the packaging that holds the doors in place, and instead they've decided to use a piece of sellotape over the top. And again, the same problem applies that it did with the second Doctor TARDIS, however a little bit less so this time round. I think that the design overall and the colour makes it less obvious. However, the problem with the previous TARDIS was that when you've taken off the tape along the front of the doors and the windows, it basically taken off quite a lot of the brown wall and it left a band of no wash around the top half of the box itself and you can ever so slightly see a little bit of tape residue that has been left behind from that which is a little bit annoying however it's not as prominent as on the previous TARDIS box. And of course, much like with any other classic series TARDIS, the doors do open, of course to reveal absolutely nothing on the inside, we just have the old remains of the battery compartment, which of course this time round is completely unusable. Something of which to note as well is that mine does have a door problem, of course you have that little nodule up there that's meant to keep the door in place, and it basically needs to be forced shut because it refuses to pop back up again, and of course on the other door, the main door, we have the button there at the very bottom, it forces it to close. Another welcome return, however something of which that wasn't present on the original Forbidden Planet exclusive TARDIS boxes, is a wash that has been applied over the windows, and we have a little bit of dirt that is collecting in the lower half of each individual pane, really emphasising the window design, as well as exaggerating the frosted effect that is present on these two bottom panes here. Much like the wash that is applied to the entirety of this TARDIS, the wash does vary between each individual box, some will be more weathered than others. I think that quite possibly this might be my favourite design of police public call box signage that has appeared within this series so far. There's just something about it that I really like. I love the fact that we've got that lighter blue background and then the bold white text on top that really stands out and sets this product apart from some of the other TARDISes that have been released within this series. Again, it is very similar to the Androzani prop, if not identical, and there is in fact a wash that has been applied over the top of this. It does seem to be ever so slightly less compared to that of the Androzani TARDIS. Again, it looks more pristine and new.
And finally, moving up to the top of the TARDIS, we have the inclusion of the stack roof formation, previously used on the other 5th Doctor TARDIS and the 7th Doctor TARDIS release. Again, much like the rest of the box, you have that wood grain effect that has been applied over the top of it to make it look less like plastic and more like wood, as well as a few smaller designs in there, really emphasised by the wash added over the top. And of course, at the very centre of this, we do have the standard classic series TARDIS lamp that was used on the initial Forbidden Planet exclusive releases. This has been nicely sculpted into clear plastic with, of course, the framework running around the sides, as well as the dome at the top. As always, this is sat on a rather large plinth. And of course, the Fifth Doctor looks excellent displayed alongside his variation of TARDIS box. Now, naturally, due to this TARDIS being a pristine variation, not only will this TARDIS look good alongside the Fifth Doctor, but also the Season 18 Fourth Doctor, and even the Sixth Doctor as well. However, of course, naturally, being a big Sixth Doctor fan, I would love to see a Sixth Doctor TARDIS released at some point, maybe replicating the design seen throughout the Sixth Doctor photoshoot for his first season, including the white splashes of paint going around the sides. I think that a Sixth Doctor figure released as a part of the B&M series at this point might be quite a way off due to how precise and how many colours are used within the Sixth Doctor's costume. It might be ever so slightly out of budget for this line currently. So there we have it, that is the Doctor Who B&M exclusive, Fifth Doctor and TARDIS collector set from the Season 19 story, The Visitation. Overall, this collector set is a bit of a hit and miss, to say the least. I absolutely love it, I think that the TARDIS is lovely, it's actually possibly my favourite TARDIS that has been released in the entirety of this line to date. I would absolutely love it if it was electronic, and it feels like it belongs within the Forbidden Planet exclusive line of TARDISes that we got to see released many months many years ago. And equally, the Fifth Doctor is also a brilliant variant from the early days of his era within Doctor Who. But that said, at the same time, this set has a lot of resemblances to that of the Fifth Doctor and TARDIS from the Caves of Andrew Rosani. And that collector set was only released around a year ago, maybe ever so slightly more than that. So I think, if anything, it's the question of, is it too soon? Or maybe even, was it really necessary for it to be a Fifth Doctor set? Personally, I would have loved for this to be a Sixth Doctor and TARDIS collector set, because, as you all know, I love the Sixth Doctor, and there is a number of Sixth Doctor costumes which are yet to be recreated within action figure form, from changing the waistcoat, you can have the red and white one, or probably numerous other waistcoats that the Sixth Doctor has worn over his era as the Doctor. This set is one that I think, if you have the original one and you kind of get the odd set here and there, this is possibly one worth missing out on. However, if you are a collector that kind of likes TARDISes, this is definitely a TARDIS I recommend, simply because it's pretty much a bog-standard 80s TARDIS that will look perfect with the vast majority of the later half of the classic series Doctors. If you don't have the original Fifth Doctor and TARDIS collector set, then yes, definitely buy this one. However, for those of you that do, it's not necessarily essential, and if you miss out, you're not really missing out on much. So thank you very much for watching this review, I really hope you have enjoyed it. Do of course check out my other Doctor Who B&M exclusive collector set reviews, as I have by now reviewed the vast majority of this wave, as well as the previous B&M collector sets. I do of course do regular Doctor Who content pretty much each and every week. So thank you very much for watching, have a nice day, stay safe, and I shall see you all next time. Bye for now.